All right, now let's get into some fun stuff. So this is what I love about Excel because now I can start to figure out what money I'm making with my goats or even better, how much money a year I'm losing on my goats because they only bring in so much and then I still have to feed them. But anyway, it's a, you know, a labor of love. Okay, so to begin, each goat gets sheared twice a year. So I need, I need a heading above this that gives me fall. Um, so just hang with me because it will make more sense once you see it. So this is going to be fall. And I'm going to have the pounds I get off each goat, the price per pound I sold, and then I need a formula here to give me the income, the total from that goat. So in this case, Carrie, I'm going to give it an equal sign to tell the computer I want to, I want you to do the calculation for me. I want you to take the pounds, which is located in B5, times, which is shift 8 or the star key if you have a number pad on the right side. So the number of pounds times the price per pound. And so you can see there's different colors, which is handy. And hit enter. Okay, so that goat made $24 in the first sharing of the year. Let's try it again. Equals pounds times the price per pound. Okay. Also 24. Look at that. I bet you already had that figured out in your head. Ha ha, that's a joke. Okay, here we go. Next formula. Pounds times price per pound. Good. And one more here. Perfect. So now I know how much each goat made individually, but the last thing I want to know is the total amount of money I made on that shearing. So we're going to use the same formula that we used here, which was adding up B5 through B8. So we're going to say equals and SUM with a parenthesis. Now tell me the range. So I tell him the range and enter. Okay. So these formulas don't have the equal sum first. It just says one cell times another cell. And that's because whenever you're only working with two cells, whether you're adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, you don't need the equal sum because it's just two cells. But anytime you go to doing a range, whether you're, no matter what the calculation is, usually you're adding, but you could be trying to find the minimum, maximum, or average, you have to use the equals and then a function, SUM, then parentheses to tell it the range. So let me say that one more time because that might, might have been too fast. Um, here, two cells. Very simple. We're just multiplying this cell, pounds, times price. So we can get away with a simple formula that just says equals multiply that cell times that cell. But this one is a range. It's more than two cells. We want to add up all of these cells. So when that's the case, we have to do equal sum, which says add up everything that's in between the two parentheses. D5 through D8. Okay, so two different ways to write formulas. Make sure you print out that summula, formula, <laughs> formula summary cheat sheet that's in Blackboard. Okay, so this is fall. So one thing I like to do is put headings over things so they make sense. I highlighted these three cells and I'm going to hit merge and center. And that will tell me that fall these three columns are talking about fall, which is very handy. Now let's say I did that, but I actually wanted to make it go over here for some reason, which I don't, but just for the sake of let me show you how this works. This is like a toggle, or this is a toggle button. It's like a light switch. So if you click it once, it's off. You click it again, it's on. If you wanted to add the merge, like extend the merge out, you have to first take it all the way off. So now fall is only in that cell and these are blank. Highlight where you do want to merge it and merge it again. Right? So if you had merged too much, same process. Unmerge everything, then select what you actually want to merge and remerge it. Okay? And then you can also change these buttons while you have it selected like that. Okay, one sharing, uh, we have two sharings a year. This is just one. And so, check this out. I can highlight all of these things. Right click, copy. I'm going to click in this first cell here, which means paste it beginning here. 
I'm going to click this first cell, which retains everything, and I'm going to paste it in. Now, obviously, this is not going to be fall, but the nice thing about this is all your formulas are set. So all you're going to put in is the different number of pounds and the different price if those changed. These calculations will all do themselves, so you don't have to set them again. Now, if you're like me, I have a little touch ADD, ADHD, whatever you want to call it. Um, this circling thing makes me crazy because I'm constantly my eyes are going back to this and I lose focus um, on what I'm doing. So I hit escape on my keyboard and it stops it. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is change this to spring. And let's say in the spring um, the girls gave more fiber, awesome, and the boys gave less. You can see how every time I changed the pounds that the totals also changed as well as the amount of money each made. And let's say the girls price of the fiber for the girls dropped. What a bummer. And the boys actually went up. All of the totals changed. Now one thing, um, and this is just I guess maybe me being a little bit OCD or whatever, I like all of these things to be the same alignment. So I'm going to hit it centered and centered. And then I know from that that this is too narrow, so I'm going to fix that one. There we go. That much that looks much better. I've got spring, right? Pounds, price per pound total and fall. The last thing I want to do is to create the year total. And I want a year total both on the pounds of fiber I got from each goat for the year and the income from each goat. So again I'm going to merge this one across because those two columns belong with year total. And this is going to be a little bit differently, uh, different because the cells are not together but it's only two cells so I can hit equals and then I'm going to grab the pounds that Carrie gave me in the fall plus the pounds that she gave me in the spring. All right, so B5 plus E5, and I hit enter, and there it is. She gave me 4.2 pounds. Now, I'm going to do the exact same thing with this one. I'm going to add up Charlotte's pounds in the fall and Charlotte's pounds in the spring. I can write the formula manually, like I've shown you, which is what you should do initially so that you start memorizing the formulas. Once you feel pretty comfortable with the formulas, you can use something called the fill handle, and the fill handle is right here in the corner that box. As soon as my cursor changes from this fat white X into the dark black one, I know I'm, I've got the fill handle, so I can click it and drag it down. And it automatically populates. So the computer knows, okay, in this row she was talking about row 5. In this row we're talking about row 6. Same column, so it's B and E, but it's just changed to 6 and now we've changed here to seven. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, and we can actually grab it and bring it down one more and it'll give me the totals from B9 and E9. I know, slick, super slick. This is why I love Excel, it's so fast. You set it one time, so our formula here is gonna be the same thing, equals, and I'm gonna say um, the total amount of money from carry in the fall, plus the total amount of money she brought in in the spring and enter and then I'm gonna just fill it down and it's all there pretty slick huh okay so that was your fill handle the last thing I want to show you in this video is your min max and average functions these are awesome so let's say I want to know the minimum amount of fiber I'm getting off a goat I would do equals min, which is the function, um, start my parenthesis, and then I'm going to highlight the four goats, how much pounds I got off of the four go different goats. So it's going to go into this range and say, uh, okay, which one's the smallest? Okay, so it's 1.8. And in this, this example, I mean, it's fairly easy to see, right? Because you can eyeball it and figure it out. But when you have you know, 50 things, this becomes a really handy function. Okay, so that's minimum, meaning it just is going to grab the smallest one. So the minimum amount I get from a goat is 1.8. The opposite of that would be equals max. Um, wrong parenthesis, there it is. 
and then highlight the same range. The most I got off a goat was 2.2 .2, and then equals average. You have to write the whole word out and then highlight the range and enter. Very cool. So the average I get from a goat was 2 pounds. Um, we could also do the same thing here with price, like how much each goat brought in. So we again do equals min parenthesis, highlight it, and enter. I bet we could do um, click and over these two, click and drag to select, control C, or right click copy. Whoops, right click copy. Either one of those will work. And then we can paste it here. And I bet it will put in the formulas. So I'm going to escape to stop the circling. Double click here to see the formula. Yep, max, which is correct, and average, which is correct. And it automatically changed those to currency, which is handy. Anytime you are in a function, or I mean in a, a formula, and let's say your cursor's here, and you're looking at a formula, but then for some reason you randomly click over here, it, sometimes it will click off like that, that's handy. But you might, it might have been that you were here and you click, oh, it's not doing it anymore. Let's see if it doesn't, ah, there it is. Sometimes if you're in a formula and you randomly click somewhere, it adds a cell into a formula and it, now your, your formula is wrong. All you have to do is hit escape and it takes it back to what it was before you inadvertently clicked. So you just have to remember anytime you're in a, f a formula, you can't randomly click around somewhere else because it automatically thinks you want to add that into the formula. All right. Hang on here. I'm going to end this video here and then we're going to do some formatting next to make the data look much more eye appealing.